We are now ready for the next step, creating extensions. Here's a checklist of things to think about before actually configuring the extensions in your system. Extension type. What kind of extension will you be creating? For example, SIP, SIP, or IAX. Extension number. It is very important to define ahead of time the scheme that you will be using to number the extensions, since this parameter is a key field in the system and cannot be modified once the extension has been defined. Outbound CID. This is the number that will be displayed to call recipients for calls placed from this extension. For example, you can choose to show the specific DID, direct inward dialing, number that is allocated to the extension or the company's main telephone number. Inbound DID. This is the number that when dialed from an endpoint outside of the system will ring this specific extension. When defined, it serves as the basic inbound route. Secret. When defining a SIP or X line as the extension, you will need to provide a secret or password allowed outbound routes. You can limit an extension to use only specific outbound routes. This parameter can be defined when you are creating the extension, if outbound routes have already been set up in the system, such as the examples provided in the standard SORCOM Complete PBX systems. It can also be applied later, either from the extensions dialog or from the outbound routes dialog. Voicemail password. We recommend activating the voicemail function and providing a voicemail access password while creating the extension. Without this, extension users will not be able to access my extension, as the voicemail password is the security used to access it. Now, let's see how we create an extension in Complete PBX. From the Complete PBX Launchpad, choose the Administration option. Go to the Connectivity menu and choose the Extensions dialog. First, Choose the type of device for which you are defining an extension and click on Submit. In this example, we'll be setting up a SIP extension. Type in the desired extension number and provide a name in the Display Name field. This is the text that will be shown to other internal users and to external recipients of calls placed from this extension, if it is supported by the external phone system. The next field to be defined, Outbound CID, is the telephone number that will be displayed to the external recipient of calls placed from this extension. In the Add Inbound DID field, we define the inbound call number, that is, the number that will be dialed to reach this extension from an endpoint that is external to the complete PBX system. Now we'll define the secret. It doesn't need to be easy to remember because it will be used only in configuration and not for access. Next, if outbound routes have already been defined in the system, you will see them here. By default, any new user is automatically provided access to all the outbound routes in the system. In our example, Andy Murray has just joined the company to coordinate tennis lessons for the employees. Consequently, he won't need the international routes. So, we'll simply remove that checkbox from this dialog. Last of all, we suggest defining voicemail for this extension. This will allow the user of this extension to access the My Extension area of the system, where he or she will be able to view the activity for the extension and modify the parameters there. You'll need to enable the voicemail option and input a password. If you provide a simple password at this point, say the extension number, you can advise the user to change it to something more personal later after logging in for the first time. Now press Submit and then Apply Configuration. If you remember, when creating the extension, we supplied a value in the Inbound Route field. So now we can go to the Connectivity menu and choose the Inbound Routes option and look for the inbound route we defined for the new extension in the list on the right-hand side of the screen. Clicking it will display the record for that route. We scroll down and see that the designated destination has been defined as the extension number we created for Andy Murray. If your system contains analog channels and you'd like to create an analog extension, also known as DADI or ZAP extensions, note that in the standard SORCOM distribution, 
analog channels have been predefined for you. If the numbering scheme that we have used, 1000 plus the channel number, suits you, then you can simply update the existing record to match your requirements, as long as you keep the channel number located here in the Device Options section. If the numbering scheme doesn't suit you, delete the record, but in your new extension setting, use the original channel number that it referenced. The last type of extension we'll cover here is a virtual extension, which shows up in the drop-down as None. An example of this type of extension would be in the case where you don't want to limit the destination to a single user in the organization. The virtual extension could be used to provide group access to a single repository of generically addressed company faxes or voicemails. This topic is covered in detail in the Complete PBX Reference Guide, which is available for download in PDF format from our website.